life. For life. What you mean? I make her disappear, and I'll let you live. Well, what you gonna do, Emmett? Ball's in your court. You wanna live, you gotta take out a life. A life of somebody who is friends with you through their mom you got to take the mom out ladies and gentlemen it's Lamont Tyson back in the building for the second part of the shy season six shout out to Lena Waif she wrote this particular episode along with Justin Hillian and we are going to break it down this is going to be one of our faster breakdowns if you want to get the full breakdown come check us out live on Monday Let's dive into it. I'm up early for the dealers come out. Everybody is outside till the killers come out. You ain't eating, you just act full. I'm in pack full. Dozen funerals in a month. I got that full. I will give it to niggas in all rap forms. Ignatius out right now on all platforms. That's right, everybody. You're in the building with y'all knowing I love all, feeling all, seeing all powerful. It's damn all everything. Sexy as hell host. That's me, Lamont Tyson. Please be sure to like the video, subscribe. A lot of people watch, but for whatever the reason, they don't hit that button. Hit that button, subscribe. Follow me on Twitter and TikTok. I do have a TikTok channel, but when you come to TikTok, man, you gotta click that TikTok shop. I got a button called the Showcase. It's all kinds of deals in there, man. Better than what you find on Amazon or anywhere else. And be sure to download the Life Games podcast. My reviews go up there. We start out with my man Trig, so frustrated, he about to go take out dude to his damn self, only to walk up in there and find Bakari. And Bakari's like, dude, what are you doing? Trig is like, bruh, you know what you playing with? This is not your kind of game. And obviously it's not because Bakari, he's one foot in the game, one foot out. He's got love for Papa and everything Papa has been trying to do for him. He's got love for Trig, he's got love for Emmett but he feel like he's in a stuck situation. With Bakari being in a stuck situation, that makes him a wild card. He's got love for everybody outside the game that is affected by Duda's evil practices, and this definitely makes Bakari a wild card for taking Duda out. By the way, it is Mother's Day. Shout out to the wonderful, beautiful mothers out there. Shout out to the ugly mothers. Shout out to all the mothers. It is your day. I hope that your babies do something special with you and you get some time to relax and just know that this world would not be what we are today, but would not be for the sacrifice of you mothers. Giving birth to kids is one of the hardest things that can be done. A man will never be able to experience it. Happy Mother's Day to all you wonderful mothers out there. It is your day. Then we get Emmett popping in here. Catching Jake talking to Papa, trying to get some free food. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Bruh. So that's what businessmen do, right? You know, he done Jake done started his business and he wanna he don't want to pay for nothing. He wanna expand his business. So he coming in here trying to get some free food. They not letting him. But the minute that their their attention is distracted, hell, fire, and rain comes down from this brother right here. Not trying to hit anyone, but at the time we didn't know that. But, ladies and gentlemen, is this camera angle going to be something that's going to come into play? Cam, number one, the dining room. Is this going to be something that's going to come into play that Emmett can hold over this dude's head? Post your comments. Let me know what you think. I think it is. And then, ladies and gentlemen, y'all have heard me say this before, and y'all know I am very biased toward dark chocolate dark skin American black women. This right here, this Keisha, shout out to the young lady who plays Keisha, Miss Burgundy from Raleigh, North Carolina. And I live in Elon. And next time you come down here, holla at your boy and his family. This Keisha is one of the top five finest people in all of Hollywood. Debate me if you want to debate me. You can't. Keisha is one of the finest people, top five in all Hollywood. And she's sitting here talking to Emmett after she just got finished calling him Malcolm. Man. 
this is if you guys don't know anything about Malcolm X, this is a real depiction of what X was doing when he felt like he was up against the wall. Take a look at the picture. And if you're watching Godfather of Harlem, you would already know this. But she basically said, what you think you're doing being Malcolm X by the window? And right now he's under so much pressure. And at first I thought this was going to be another one of these back and forth between the two where they couldn't work things out. And it turned out they was able to work it out. And I was so happy because I'm tired of seeing them bicker with each other. She understand where he's coming from. He's understanding her concerns about this situation they in. And they was able to finally have a moment where they sat down and came together. That made me feel good. Then we finally get our first shot at Duda when everybody done came back to let him know what the hell is going on. Bakari is very upset that the restaurant got shot up while Papa was there. And dude is basically telling him to sit his five-figure ass down, five-dollar ass down before we make change. And if you young people don't know what he was referencing, that was from New Jack City and Wesley Snipes. Like I said, Bakari is a wild card, ladies and gentlemen. I would, I would beg to say all of Duda's top three henchmen are all wild cards. We done seen Nook sneaking behind closed doors talking to Keisha. We know he still got love for Keisha. And we know his new young blood, he's out here having secret meetings with somebody else. So I want to know from you all, post your comments, which one of the three is going to be the one to do Duda? We get to the hospital, Rob survived, but Tiff don't want to come in there and talk to him while the mama is there. And the mama is in a rush to get his ass up out of there. And then we get back to Emmett having a conversation with his daddy, who I absolutely love. The daddy is, daddy is a, is a cool cat. And Emmett is talking about how he going to get out of this situation. And him and his daddy come to the conclusion, well, I just got to make myself greater value to do the alive than dead. And this papa is really trying to be there, man. And I, a part of me still think that daddy might try to intervene and get taken out. I hope not because I like the dad. But he's he's working a good plan. And I like what they're saying. Make yourself greater value alive than dead. We get back to Tiff wanting to know from Rob's daddy, Alicia, what the hell are you doing taking him out of the hospital? Alicia already knew that Duda was going to come for him. So this is a smart move. But Tiff has got to start realizing that Alicia is more on the dark side than she is on the right side, the light side, because she ain't playing no games. And no sooner than they get Rob's ass up out of there, his six foot seven ass out of there, we coming in with the silencer. Now, folks, tell, t please, somebody please tell me how we supposed to suspend our imagination. Look at this nigga. Look at this nigga. You mean to tell me that nobody in that hospital realized that this dude don't work here? I'm assuming he took out somebody on the bottom floor with the candy stripers and is pretending like he's the dude that's going around delivering the gifts and flowers and shit. And he's able to pull out a gun on a silencer, make it to Rob's room and realize Rob ain't there. Help me, people. Could this happen in your hospital if you work in the hospital? Post your comments. Mama Jada want to know what the hell is going on. And in true men's fashion, we trying to tell the women to stay out of it. Fellas, I'm going to go ahead and tell you this. I know sometimes you think that women can be emotional, which is a stereotype. But oftentimes they can give you the best insight and see things you wouldn't see. And I get that a lot of times we don't tell women because we don't want them to be worried. Let them worry. I mean, don't give, I mean, don't try to control their thoughts. Oftentimes when women's backs are up against the wall, it's when some of their greatest ideas come out and they, I'm assuming he's going to tell her everything that's going on. Cause she want to know, damn it. You, my baby, it's mother's day weekend. And I want to know Papa is talking to Bakari, just letting Bakari know that, bruh, you don't have to keep doing what you're doing. I could have died. There'd be no more Papa's pool pit. Think of everything me and my daddy have done for you. And look, whether Bakari want to admit it or not, he has tremendous love, tremendous love for Papa. And that's what I'm telling y'all. I think Bakari is a damn wild card, man. He going to mess around and he going to have 
do the looking around, fuck around and find out, as y'all say on TV. Papa orchestrates a meeting for Emmett and Bakari, and this is another situation where Emmett had to remind Bakari, look, bro, when you was dead broke and naked and you ain't had nothing but a chicken wing to eat on, I gave you real food, okay? I need you to get this meeting with me and Duda so I can handle my business. Can you do that? And after Bakari thought about it, he decided he was going to help him out. But here's the intricate plot. This is another wild card. Bakari's sister, who obviously cares about Gemma, but is supposed to be working for Duda. This chick done spent 30 racks. She gave 10 of it to Gemma, and then she's giving some to the, the people that's doing her studio time, and she's hanging out with this cat. Which way is she going to go? She's supposed to be getting intel and information on Bakari, and she ain't doing that because she's so far up Gemma's hoo-ha. How is this going to go down? I could easily see this chick being taken out, which would further escalate Bakari to a bad place. Post your comments. Bakari meets up with Nook and realizes that Nook is a real human. Nook basically told him, I had dreams and aspirations before I got in this damn game, and dreams don't always come true for everybody. I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but ladies and gentlemen, that is true. But here's the thing. Who says that you only have to have one dream? Just because one thing doesn't work out for you don't mean you can find something else to do that can fulfill that passion. Let's take me for example. I'm five foot eight and a half. Growing up, basketball was my favorite sport. I could never dunk. I could shoot well. I wasn't that athletic. I had to learn quickly that going to the NBA was not going to be one of the dreams I would achieve. But guess what I did achieve? I am now writing scripts. Shout out to anybody that watches this show that want to help a brother get his scripts made. I have done successful on YouTube. I own a bunch of real estate. Those were all dreams I didn't know about when I was young that I was able to achieve. So he's right. You don't reach all your dreams. But ladies and gentlemen, there are still some dreams you can reach. And with Bakari being so young, he's got time to get to those dreams. And I think he's thinking about it as we speak. Oh, Lord. As we see, Bakari might be about to descent from Duda. We got another cat that's about to be under Duda thumb, and that's Jake. Jake business is at a place where it can take off, but he need an infusion of cash. And homeboy give him the cash. But you know that cash comes with strings. And this is the sad part of American capitalism that most of us don't like. That's why it's called capitalism. <coughs> <coughs> A lot of entrepreneurs get to a point where they can scale their business up, but they need an infusion of cash. And you damn near got to get your ass out here and go beg from people to give you that infusion of cash. You got to get on your knees, get naked, offer them X, Y, Z percentages of your money. And that shit irritates me because I'm having to do the same thing in film. And there needs to be a better way so that you don't have to do that. Now, let's just say you're out here doing that and none of the legit people believe in what you're doing. Most people have to run to these underground buffoons like Jake is doing because there's nowhere else to go. And don't let your credit be bad, okay? Don't let that be bad. There needs to be a better system in place so that people don't have to do what Jake just did. Or you could just say, fuck it, I'm just going to go work for McDonald's or work somewhere else. Or I guess you could say you could do a side hustle till you get up the money. But because the way capitalism works, it gives you limited options. You could go and work a real job and try to do a side hustle, and it take you six to eight years to retrieve your dream. By that point in time, things could be done evolved. You see how quickly technology evolves. Folks, there needs to be a better way, but until there's a better way, keep trying to do things the right way. Keep trying to go through the right channels to get this money. Here's another one that I got to chastise. Ladies, y'all might come for me, but you know, it's all good. This is a meeting of two women who have been done bad by men in their perspective. Of these two men that they're in here bashing, really and truly only one of them is a bad dude. So my girl Tracy, she was done bad by Duda. Other chick was done bad by my main man, Jason Weaver. And you know what? 
what happened with her and Jason Weaver and the way she's trying to depict Jason Weaver when she said, I lowered my standards. We got to stop this shit, women. Stop this I'm lowering my standards shit. Because what do you mean when you say you're lowering your standards? A lot of y'all have this expectation you want a man with a 12-inch penis and making six figures. If you're making six figures in the United States, you're in the 10%. The average cat is making somewhere between thirty-five to $75,000. And just because you're, ma you're not making six figures, well, let me take that back. Just because you're making six figures does not mean you're not flawed. Last I checked, every single person on the planet Earth is flawed somehow, some way. So basically what Sister is saying is she wants to get someone flawed but their floor is six figures and a whole lot of good sex. Only for that person to most likely do you the same way that you feel like happened with you and Jason Weaver's character. Only difference is when you have a guy who has potential, people make mistakes. So basically you said you want the mistake to be made with someone who has a quote unquote higher standard of, of whatever. You would still feel the same hurt whether it's a guy with six figures and 12 inches or the guy you claim you lowered your standards for. Jason Weaver's character is not a bad guy. I feel like he made an honest mistake and he's the type of cat that can learn from it. Tracy, on the other hand, what you did with Duda, yeah, you might as well just keep on pleasing yourself, eating cookies, and staying chubby. Because if Duda is the type of cats you're gonna be going after, you're gonna stay disappointed. How about considering not putting all men into the same box, realizing everybody is flawed, and working with people and talking to them? People make mistakes. That doesn't mean they're bad people. But in Tracy's case, Duda is a bad guy, and you fell for the banana in the tailpipe. But hey, y'all look cozy with each other. Maybe you two can become a couple. Y'all see how cozy and close they got? Maybe they can become a couple. Post your comments. We had a studio session, and it was a rocking studio session. Gemma was in there with Bakari's sister. Kevin's girlfriend wanted to go on a date, and they told her no. They go to Emmett's spot, send her pictures, and she feels like they left her out. Now, I got to say, I am loving Gemma's hair. This short do on Gemma is fire. It looks a whole lot better than that Harriet Tubman afro she had. This is a perfect hairdo for her, and I'm liking it. But she's about to get herself in a world of trouble with this sister. And keep in mind, the sister did kiss her, and she liked it. Emmett confronts the new left hand, the Duda. And this was a kind of an eerie scene to me. I felt like they overcooked the drama on this scene. They did the red light special. I felt like there was more tension than what really needed to be in this scene. And basically all Emmett said was, dude, I got dirt on you. I'm not going anywhere. You need to watch your back. Because while you thinking you getting close to Duda, I know where the hell you was at when we tried to take that life. And I will tell on you. And this scene right here, this shit was funny as hell. <laughs> they just told all Emmett business out there. My man got more kids than a Wakandan village. And they told all this to Alicia because he was trying to get up in there to see Rob. And Alicia don't really know them like that. And I got to just put a pin in the argument Alicia was trying to make about how back in the old school days, they believed in marriage and all that bullshit. Folks, stop it. Stop it. Back in the old school days, a lot of people got married, didn't divorce because of the finances. Dudes was out here going having whole families with other women and the women who was who didn't have the careers and all that was they didn't have no choice. They stuck with the guy. And back if we want to go back to the slavery days, white men was married and be sticking their penis all up in the slavery hen house, fucking every black girl they could get, loving the black women more than their own wives in the house. So uh, uh, miss me with this, Alicia. Miss me with all this old school bull jive. Like they said. At least they're upfront with what they're doing and they're trying to work their family out. And then we saw Rob come out. He's actually walking and talking and telling his mama, no, mm -mm. we're going to do something better than what we're talking about. 
Then we get the Duda confronting his left hand, letting his left hand know you should have took you should have took Emmett out. But Duda realizes where the hell was your ass when that attempt on my life came. I think if anything, Duda might take this guy out before he do anything to Emmett. Post your comments. Let me know what you think. Then we get the wonderful, the immaculate Jill Marie, who on IG you want to reach her? It's Jill Marie coming in and enjoying Tiff because she's got a, a cigar lounge and she wants to diversify her income in that cigar lounge. So she want to get some of Tiff weed up in there and she let Tiff know that when nobody else believed in her, Alicia did. And that's when Alicia comes in and says, look, I need a favor from you. It's Jill Marie. I'm going to need you to get me some intel on Duda. Now, do she know that she slept with Duda? Like, they had a hot and steamy sex scene in a damn shower. This is another wild card, people. Which way is Jill Marie's character going to go? Post your comments. And we get a scene with the immaculate Tyler Abercrombie, who plays Keisha's mother. And by the way, she's looking very, very good in that blue. And her heart is broken because she finds out that her lover is in love with her ex and the daughter had to come in and comfort her. Now, casting, big shout out to you because you made this family look just alike. The mama looked like Keisha. The mama also looked like Kevin. Damn good job. But I like how Keisha is showing her growth from the very first season to now. She has been through so many things. She's able to comfort her mom in a very adult situation. Enjoyed that. Then we get to Gemma talking to her, what's about to be her new stepmama, about she kissed the girl and she liked that shit. And stepmama's like, it's called exploring. This is a, a probably a point of contention for a lot of people because a lot of people would say, if you kissed the girl and you liked it, then yeah, you a lesbian. But it don't necessarily mean you a lesbian. You could be bisexual. There, There's other terms in the LGBTQ plus community that it could mean. And the thing that I wanted her to do is just like, look, as early as possible, you need to let your boyfriend know. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, the right thing to do is for Gemma to let Jake know as soon as possible so that he can know what moves he need to make. If he wants to be tolerant of the person that's supposed to be his girlfriend liking girls, Okay, he can accept that. If not, let him move on. You don't just sit here and be like, tell him when you're ready. No, because you legitimately are cheating on this dude. And that's not right. And if y'all think I'm wrong, please post your comments. Let me know. Then we get to Jake talking to his big brother. And the big brother is not happy he took that money from Duda. And Jake is just kind of like, he's in a quagmire. Or as one another military term, a cluster elf. He don't know what to do. He needs this money so he can scale up his business. And Big Brother's like, come on, man, you can come to this male mentoring meeting and we can talk about it. But as we saw, Jake ain't showing up because Jake got business on his mind. And I think Jake is taking a look at the girls on Instagram modeling in clothes. And I think that gave him an idea. He's about to start getting down like the Jasmine brand put chicks in his clothes, put them on IG, and blow up. That's what I'm talking about, Jake. Get that thing right, brother. And then Papa's having a, <laughs> a conversation with his ex, who is Kevin's next, and they getting a little close, and could y'all feel that tension when Papa gave her great advice? Papa was giving her straight down the middle good advice, and they was about to kiss. I could see Papa about to fall into her noonie jugs, and then that text came from Kevin. Right before his head could get in between them, the text came from Kevin and saved that situation. But I think we've got a real situation with all these because with Kevin being gone, her little hoo-ha gonna be humming too. And Papa, he ain't messing with the girl with the kid no more, so I think we might be about to see some trouble. But I hope we see Kevin before the end of the season. We get our male mentor meeting. Bakari showed up, Emmett showed up, but by the time this thing was over with, we had Emmett getting ready to walk out that damn door to go get Duda. And nobody wants to see that. But unfortunately, that's what he did, and that's when we get to the end 
when he got in here and dude his face and basically told him, I'm more valuable to you alive than dead. And Duda said, well, if you think that's what you are, well, this is what you got to do for me, Emmett. I want you to take out Alicia, Rob's mama. Wow. How did you guys feel about this episode? Um, I, 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 I think the issue for me, it was a drag because the series has been gone for so long. I'm not with this thing that streamers are doing where they're taking a single season and splitting it up into two parts. Now, I'm glad they're doing more than 10 episodes, but if you're going to split it up, can we not split it up for like a whole damn year? Can we split it up for maybe two months, three months, something like that? That took a little bit of the steam out of the show for me, but I want to hear from you guys. Post your comments. Let me know how you feel. That's going to do it for this video. Don't forget to like the video, comment, subscribe, get that life game. Please be sure to follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and the TikTok. When you get to me on TikTok, go click on the showcase button. Find some of those good deals. Air Jordans for $100. Electronic scooters that go 19 miles of range, $200. Jewelry, team paraphernalia, whatever you want. And be sure to download that podcast and check a brother out. Take me on the go wherever you go. And until that next sexy as hell video, I'm out.